Thank you and welcome back. Terminology. There are many terms that are used in the lighting industry and some of them are important and necessary and just as essential is knowing and understanding on what they mean and let's have a look at some of them now and how they could benefit you on your next installation. We start with lumens. Lumens is abbreviated as LM and often uh, a lot of people get confused with this but Lumens is a measurement of the total amount of visible light emitted by the source. Now, the source being your light fitting itself, and usually it's done at the chips themselves. Next we want to discuss is LUX. Now LUX is abbreviated as LX. LUX is a unit of illuminance uh, emittance, and that's measured by a light, a meter, for more accurate uh, results. And I have one here, as you can see. Today's technology advancements, uh, we now have smartphones and you can now download apps uh, for both Android software and also Apple iPhone software. Many are available free on, on the internet. Um, not as accurate as your light meters or your Lux meters, but certainly they give you a general idea. So Lux is measured and when you do actually measure that Lux, it's at a predetermined pre spot. So if you're measuring this table here, at this level here, how much lux am I getting? Uh, you would read your meter here and your light, of course, from here. So this is your predetermined spot down here. And in some cases, some standards require you to meet a certain level of lux. Next is efficacy. Uh, efficacy is a ratio of how many lumens each watt of light source produces. Uh, in abbreviation, lumens divided by wattage, uh, and that will tell you how efficient the light source is able to convert electricity into light. The higher the efficacy value, the more efficient the light source will be. CRI, Color Rendering Index. Color Rendering Index is, um, is the ability of a light source to replicate colors generated by a reference of light. Uh, its light source of the same temperature. It's measured between 1 to 100 and 100 being the highest that you could get close to the original light source. Binning. Human eyes can discern differences in the colour extremely well and this means that we can enjoy a huge array of colours. Um, but the LED manufacturing process is not as accurate as our own eyes. So to ensure that every LED is identical, we call it binning. And that's where the LEDs are sorted into different bins. And this is based upon their characteristics such as color, their electrical properties, and also the amount of light output that they can do. This is called binning. Average lifespans. 50,000 hours, it's not uncommon to, to hear that. But how do they get that figure? And what is it based upon? In a lot of products, you'll see a code referred to as L60, L70, or even L80. L70 is what we use in a lot of our fittings. And how they work that is, it is a luminance maintenance. Now the human eye, as, as well as it is, we cannot usually tell the difference between uh, a light color shading until it's reduced by about 30%. So at L70 is when they suspect or they think that you should be changing that light fitting. So the 50,000 hours is until that point L70. Junction temperature. This is another key aspect of understanding on how LEDs will last you last longer. Now, junction temperature is where at the point, it's the hottest point. Now there's an electrical reaction between your P cells and your N cells, and that's what creates light. Now, at that point, uh, what we refer to as the um, recombining the charge carriers, that is the hottest point or adjacent to the LED junction. You'll find that removing that heat quickly by using a good quality heat sink and also using good quality uh, LED chips themselves and combining those two the actual image we'll put up on screen here will show you the N particles and the P particles and where they meet and where that hot spot is actually located. CCT, correlated color temperature. 
many people are aware of different uh, color tones. Now, it's rated on the Kelvin scale, and it could be anywhere from terminologies such as warm white, neutral white, daylight, cool white. Many of us have heard these, but don't get confused by them because different manufacturers have different scales. Best thing to always refer to is the K rating or the Kelvin rating. Warm white, some manufacturers refer to as 2700K, whereas other manufacturers look at maybe 3000K. So always look at what is the Kelvin rating and what's best and where to use that type of fitting and what aspect. For an example, if you were looking at putting in lighting into, your, into a cafe or a restaurant, for example, you want that person to feel relaxed. That's where we would recommend something like a warm white between 2700 and 3000 K. It makes you feel more at ease, relaxed. And if you're having a cup of coffee, you may want that second one. And look, they may even want you to have a piece of cake with it as well. Going to um, a different scenario is for an office situation. Now an office situation, you don't need them to be relaxed in most cases. You want them to be a little bit more, um, more upbeat, a bit more awake. Now 4000K, or what we refer to as neutral white, is commonly used for that particular purpose. It's not too low and it's not too bright. Around Australia, we find that 6000K in our northern, northern part of the country, it makes you feel cooler having that crisper colour. Whereas in winter time, maybe in the southern states of Australia, like in Tasmania or in Victoria, they may like that warm white because it feels warmth for you. So as you can see, with the Kelvin scale, we'll put up a chart here and you can see the different levels of the Kelvin scale and what, what they make you feel and the appropriate applications. Even in your household situation, uh, you may find in a bedroom, you may like the warm white light. Whereas in a kitchen, you may like that neutral white where you can see what you're cooking under different, uh, under different levels of light. You may want to pay close attention to coming up when we go through some of our products. Introduce you to our one box family. And our one box family ranges from our down lights to our commercial range, but one fitting that can change between all three aspects of that color scale, just by flicking the switch on the wall or on the back of the fitting. IP ratings, let's discuss those. IP stands for ingress protection, usually followed by two numbers and a lot of people get confused with this. Your first number on your IP rating is to refer to dust. That's the amount of the size of the dust particles that the fitting can withstand. So the higher the number, the less the actual size of the dust particles and protection you have. The second number refers to moisture and the moisture content of what pressure it can handle. For example, as you can see on the chart, it shows uh, whether it can handle a splash of water or direct high pressure water, even to the point of can it be submersed underwater. IC or ICF. What does the IC stand for? It stands for insulation contact. And if a downline has an IC or an ICF rating, it means that this fitting can be covered or abutted. Uh, for an example, with a light fitting, you can cover the fitting and abut the fitting only if it has either an IC or an ICF rating. If the fitting does not have or is a non-IC compliant fitting, please be aware that you must have a specific amount of clearance away from the fitting and also above the fitting and it cannot be covered. The difference also between IC and ICF, we want to make sure it's clear that the F does not stand for fire rating. Um, the F stands for a particular um, dust where a probe of one mil cannot enter the fitting at any circumstance. So both IC and ICF you can cover and you can abut uh, with insulation contact if it has that rating. Driver. We call them drivers. Some people refer to them as power supplies or even transformers. But they do more than just transform power. They change the amount of voltage, most common from 240 down to 12 volts, 
or down to a maybe a multitude or a range of voltage. In most common downlights of today, they use constant current. And in most drivers, constant current, the voltage fluctuates. Because there's a lot more difference in these, um, I have one here. Next time you do have a look at your downlight fittings, just check the secondary voltage and you can see it change. Now the driver does more than just change power. The most other important thing is what about your dimming aspect? Now this is the difference between a lot of good quality drivers and some of those poor ones out there. The dimming aspect of your lighting does come down to the quality of the driver as well and how smooth that dimming is or perhaps how compatible with your dimmer that it may well be. Also touch upon in most power supplies in even in a commercial application ambient temperatures are only rated to about 40 degrees whereas with most downlights with their LED drivers ambient temperatures can head anywhere up to about 70 degrees plus. So again, a driver does more than just change voltages. They would stand a, a lot higher ambient temperatures, but also more compatible with those dimming applications as well. Passive infrared versus microwave. Different sensors using for different applications. PIR, short for passive infrared sensors, commonly referred and used in a lot of smaller areas where uh, your predetermined space is not as large. For example, um, in your house, maybe an alarm system in your house, the rooms are not as large, the detection range, not as accurate uh, as far as body movement or on heat. Some applications in a uh, commercial circumstance do require sensors that can go higher than say your standard two, 2.4 ceiling household in some aspects in warehouses which are 15 meters high. So we refer to and we use microwave sensors. Now the benefit of microwave sensors also are things that they can detect a lot higher movement. Um, some of our fittings which you'll see a little bit later can pick up a distance from roof to floor 15 meters. So quite a bigger detection area and also different aspects of detection maybe if it's a L shape, or maybe you just don't want them to see the actual detector. Microwave sensors, they can be placed behind uh, your diffusers. And in some applications, which you'll see a little bit later in some of our products, you can put these behind diffusers so they can't be vandaled, tampered, and also they've got settings on the microwave sensors also, which is a good. And some of the microwave sensors have got adjustables fittings where you can adjust the amount of time that the light goes into a sensor mode. So if it doesn't detect any movement, it can turn off or turn the light level down to a certain percentage that you still have a level of light for safety or for security. But as soon as this detects movement, up she comes to 100%. So microwave sensors, um, you can hide them behind a lot of aspects, glass uh, and opaque diffusers, much more viable aspect for detection.